it may surprise you to know, but one of my other hobbies that I love is meditation. Um, I'm sort of a novice and um, I don't know what the word would be I'm thinking of. Uh, a dabbler, I'd say, in spiritualism. Um, but it is something that's very attractive, especially with somebody such as myself who can, as you've seen, have a pretty erratic personality. So the fragrances uh, for this summer list are all about minimalism. They're about um, the fundamentals and what a perfumier, what an artist can do with such simple uh, and fundamental notes. I think it's fantastic, you know, I love my uh, gargantuan, big, elaborate, crazy fragrances. Who doesn't, you know, uh, Jubilation 25, which has got about 7 billion notes, or, I don't know, most of the Manseras. You know, these incredible, um, epic uh, fragrances. But I think that a note of a true artist, um, in any art form, somebody who has truly mastered their craft, is somebody that can take... Um, either one note or one idea, something very simple, and then make it um, perfected. That, to me, is a sign of true mastery in your art form. It's a cliche to say, um, oh, this was a very hard list to make because all of them were, you know, um, I, all of them were so um, good and so brilliant that it was difficult sort of placing them in order. But and that is a cliche, but that's actually true. My number nine on this list, I, I swore it was going to be in the top five. But that's great. I'd rather have a list that is so compacted with quality um, and enriched with uh, so much that it's actually quite hard to uh, put them uh, in a row. But I have done so, and we're going to start off with number ten. So... When it comes to uh, simplicity and working with the fundamentals, one of the best houses to go to is Aqua de Palma. Uh, by the way, number 10, Aqua de Palma, Colonia Intensa. I will get to that in a minute, but let me just speak a little bit about Aqua de Palma. Um, this is probably going to be a, a, a long video because I really love the fragrances that I've got here, and I've got a tremendous amount to say um, about uh, quite a lot of them really uh, impassioned uh, stories and ideas that I want to give to you but um, so uh, strap in um, Aqua de Palma are going through a bit of a, um, a phase where they sort of feel as though they have to do more than they actually should they've they've they, they started off with Colonia and they've done many many flankers of that and I think that they feel a little bit uh, insecure because their fragrances or their hero fragrance colonia is extraordinarily uh, simple it's almost like smelling a piece of fragrance history if you will because a hundred years ago that was um the sort of the standard textbook fragrance that sort of old school neroli bergamot smell with um a few little spices in between but it still rings true to today and i have been wearing this quite a lot. Um, I've been doing a few business meetings uh, this year with regards to my film and I've actually been um, going for this one because it's such a great neutral solid um, Neroli citrus smell. You can't really do too wrong. So I'd say that this would be my official dumb reach as um, Jeremy would say from Fragrance Bros. It has been a fragrance that has been so easy to reach to and again it has completely met the criteria of something that is um, truly solid in its simplicity. So number 10, Colonia Intensa. So number 9 is from the House of Prada and it's called Iris Cidre. So I said in my um, spring list, I've actually just sprayed this, that is absolutely gorgeous. Um, again, this is my number 9 spot. I swore this was going to be in the top 5 but unfortunately, it has got some heavy, heavy competition in this list, so it's unfortunate. But that does not mean, by any means, that this is bad. Um, I said in my uh, top 10 spring list that I've been getting a lot into Prada's um, Les Infusions collection. And truly, this is my second bottle. I've got Fleur d'Orange as well. I absolutely am in love. And um, this uses Iris to its true potential 
as a note itself. We've seen iris taken in many forms, um, of course, famously with the duo online. But this is... Um, it, <laughs> it actually smells like really, really good quality shaving foam or shaving cream, right? Which uh, some people may not want to go around smelling like that, but it's incredibly clean. Um, the iris is worked so beautifully, so joyfully, that instead of taking the powdery nuances from iris, it wor works full throttle with the cleanliness of iris. You will smell super clean um, wearing this wonderful number nine right there. So number eight, um, again, a really, really wonderful fragrance. Um, I thought it was going to be higher, but um, there's no need to sort of tell you that this is a this is a really strong list that I'm very proud of. So Versace Man's Eau Fresh. I'm not going to be talking too much about this because I have got um, a review of this uh, coming up. This has a very, very specific, wonderful fragrance memory. That, along with the presentation of what this is, if I'm right in what I think and my theories about this fragrance, I would be willing to argue that as an artistic creation, this is a perfect fragrance. So I know one person, uh, one friend of mine in the community who's going to be very pleased to see this in the list, and that is from the very talented house of Byredo, and that is Baldafrique. Um, so Baldafrique, um, I'm going to be releasing a review of this in about two hours' time from the release of this video. And one, one of the things that I, I do say, which I, I tr truly genuinely think, is that the, the man behind this, he makes his fragrances with a sort of a mathematical, scientific precision. There is no note, there is no nuance out of alignment with this fragrance. And most of the Byredo fragrances, actually, they're very, um, almost tactically made. Um, there's little room for error, uh, and that's something that I really love. I've been wearing this um, on occasions um, for, for, for casual, or oh, just fly little, little fly just flying to me there. Um, but I've been wearing this on a lot of casual occasions. Um, for something so unique and something um, so sort of, actually, I'd say unusual, it can have a bit of a, a dryness to it, um, not the conventional sweetness that you'd, that you'd see in a, a casual fragrance. This is quite the people pleaser, actually. A lot of people have commented uh, on this when I've worn it. So um, that's a real plus as well. So brilliant. Number seven, Baldafrique by Byredo. So number six is from the house of Maison Francis Kerjam. It's called Aqua Universalis Fort or Forte. Um, so I'm going to be um, very up in front. This is the one that actually inspired this list or inspired the theme of it. Um, I've had an up-and-down relationship with Maison Francis Cougar. Of course, famously did uh, Le Mal for Jean-Paul Gaultier when he was only 26 years old. He was actually still training to be a perfumier when he got selected and became the huge, gigantic superstar that he is today. Um, he's definitely... The, I just wanted to comment a little bit. Um, Francis Cougar is totally... Uh, uh, somebody who learned how to make fragrances in the late 80s, early 90s. His style is still there. He's still rocking it, and he doesn't, he doesn't care. He's, he is quite old school in that respect. Well, 80s, 90s kind of um, uh, structure of perfume, still not that old school. There's remnants of it today. Um, the, the newer kind of fragrances are like, well, you have the noughties, which is like super sweet, like one million, um, and kind of like darker, like woody, amber stuff like Armani Code. But there's so many influences of the 80s, 90s, like CK1, Cool Water, Green Irish Tweed, um, all that good stuff. Uh, that's what was in, and that is still what is in with um, Francis Kojan. Um, I didn't quite like his stuff at first. I actually found it quite plasticky, and I found it a little bit like overpriced and a bit plain. But then I started to like Oud Satin Mood. Then I started to like um, Baccarat Rouge 540. Then I loved Oud Satin Mood. Then I freaking loved uh, Plurel. Then I really liked Amaris. And here we are. And I've bought a bottle. So there we go. We can't argue with it anymore. Um, this one truly is, again, one of the things that I loved about it is that he is a, uh, he shows in this that he is a master of simplicity. 
He is a master of taking the fundamental elements of what makes fragrances good uh, and, and popular in the aquatic sense and just turns it up to 11, pushes it all the way out, and he's made this. Also, the oil content is tremendous, right? When I, um, when I spray this, I mean, I feel the oil. I feel the oil spillage onto my skin. It's, uh, there's a lot of oil in, in his fragrances. Um, he kind of reminds me of Christopher Nolan, who refuses to go digital. He always wants to put it, you know, go with film. Uh, Francis Cojan, similar. He doesn't really want to use too much alcohol or too much synthetics. He loves his oils. So I was really influenced by this. I've been wearing this a ton. It's really great. It's so simple. But there's, there's, there's artwork in here. You know, there's real ideas in here and there's real structure. Um, it's a, a beautiful piece. Um, he's def definitely his best, I'd say, from the Aqua Universalis line. This next fragrance is one of the most beautifully presented uh, fragrances I've ever seen. It's from the La Matière collection of Guerlain. Um, and it is called Rose Barbère. And... Um, so let me just tell you this. I don't like rose. I think it's such an insipid, awful um, kind of kind of sour note that I don't like. I think it's such a cheap um, idea um, to make a fragrance out of rose. I don't think it's done very well. Even some of the oud rose combinations, I have problems with. I can't, I hate every single Stella McCartney fragrance I've ever smelled. Who's obsessed with using rose in her fragrance? But this is when I first smelled this. I I thought no, like I I I shouldn't like this. This is against what I what I believe in on a spiritual level. But that is truly brilliant. It might be unusual. Uh, you might think for uh, a summer. Um, uh, fragrance, but I've been using this on at night times. I've been using this going out, m going out for meals, um, sunsets, um, twilight, um, that time of the evening. This has been a real gem for me. This has been something I've used um, concurrently. It's it's got enough to it. It's got a bit of um, it's got a bit of water within it. It's got a bit of an an an, an aquatid. I don't know if that's a word. An aquatidity. It's got a bit of aqua in it. It's got a bit of clean water within it. That means that um, I could wear this in the day. I choose not to. I usually wear it around about the night time. But it is rose um, laced with a few sweet elements. Um, but it's 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 hidden. It's it, it's faded. It's tucked underneath quite a few things. Um, so again, I love that. I think that's quite masterful. Using rose um, as a baseline, and then just kind of creating a few things to um, to sort of iron it out, iron out the creases of rose that I have problems with. It's it is probably I th for me personally, but then again, I'm not a rose connoisseur. It is it is the best rose fragrance I've ever personally smelt. Um, well, it has to be. I've bought it, and I don't buy rose fragrances. Number four in this list is another fragrance from the house of Guerlain. Um, I I am a bit of a Guerlain fanboy. I've been trying to rake in a lot of their stuff. Um, you know, recently the the the, the fragrances that um, I really, really, truly love. I'm going to be getting Spiritus Dublinini hopefully the, for the winter time. Um, but this is from their Aqua Allegoria line, a huge line of fragrances, and it is the infamous Pampaloon. So, Pampaloon, of course, we're talking grapefruit. Again, you know, with this, one of the best uses of rose I've ever seen, this is one of, if not the best use of grapefruits. I've ever ever seen they're so masterful they're so thoughtful they're so insightful when they want to take one note just one note and highlight it make it a hero make it um, specific to that fragrance um, truly truly uh, a divine uh, piece here so at this point I am absolutely addicted to this. It, it, it it's it's quite incredible, really, because grapefruit is is used so much in commercial fragrances. It's ridiculous. There's so um, much use of grapefruit, almost as an afterthought, you know, just as a sort of a base note that we're just gonna we're just gonna put that there. Um, 
Where am I putting this? Uh, speaking of which, I'll put that there because I'm talking about you right now. Um, grapefruit is is kind of like it's used as an af- afterthought. It's in so many fragrances just to give it like a sweet pop, bubble gummy um, pump into the fragrances but then to take that and go well actually we're going to highlight that we're going to highlight something that is usually in the background usually used as as the spine of a fragrance and we're going to take it full on and we're going to make a masterpiece i have been addicted to this i have worn this as much as i can i can't get enough of it a word of warning though and this is not for everybody um especially the top when it opens up it can be quite feminine like for real seriously um you have to have the kind of extroverted personality to 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 get away with this but it can be feminine i think this would smell beautiful on a woman but if you are sensitive about that kind of thing um then i wouldn't go for it but if you love sweet if if you want to see grapefruit in truly all of its glory just just blind by it it's so reasonably priced as well the number three on this list highlights the very reason why i never and i never will um separate my niche fragrances from designer fragrances all right we've got some expensive fragrances here you know we've got some fragrances that are from niche houses um who have been at their craft for a long time but this one is a designer fragrance um and it's compared to these extraordinarily uh, well priced it's from the house of christian dior it's dior on sport um, 2012. I've smelt the, the latest version. I don't dislike it by any means, but I do prefer this one for now. This one is still relatively okay to find. It's not impossible to find it. That's why it's on this list, but it will probably be the last time that it's on this list because I do try to eschew from putting things on the list which are not readily available. But this is available for now but it's probably the last time that this will be on a top 10 list because of the fact that it has been recently discontinued but what a way to go out number three i've gone on record saying it's so romantic but it is just so damn pleasing and again it completely fits in with what i'm trying to go for this year which is a little bit of iris a little bit of ginger a little bit of citrus a little bit of water something that is so simple and so easy to get wrong may i add but the elevation the eloquency of where the note should be of where everything fits into place one smell after another leading into another an absolute masterpiece a work of art a work of true art and it's sexy stuff it's truly sexy stuff when you put this on you really feel a little bit untouchable because it has just this um sort of sleek confidence within it that is very alluring um and really really just sensual and really lovely to walk around in a true true uh, brilliant fragrance from the house of christian dior you will be missed my friend so if you followed me for a while you probably have an inkling at this point what number one it is and i'm gonna talk about number one quite a bit um but we know what num- we for those of you who know what number one is you also know that it's going to be number one for a while probably probably forever so i want to give a lot of credence and a lot of attention to this number two right here it's been on my spring list and it's something um that i feel very uh, lucky and proud of because i've not really seen anybody talk about it um and i wonder why because again truly truly wonderful fragrance it's from the house of armane Prive. it is it's it's vetiver it's vetiver it's definitely vetiver but this last pronunciation i can't ever get so we're just i think it's dehiva um oh man i am awful i love my fragrances but i am terrible with my fragrance pronunciations dehiva or dehiva i'm sorry i'm I, i'm sorry but what counts is the juice inside Again, it's kind of, it reminds me of the compositional nature and the DNA of Dior Homme Sport. Uh, I'm going to have to spray this one, actually. Um, I've been, I mean, I've been wearing this so, so much. Um. Oh, man, this is, um, 
so so one of my one of my most popular videos strangely i don't know why it is um i don't think it's a very good review actually it's it's vulgari man extreme and i loved that fragrance i loved 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 that fragrance um it was my summer number one at one point actually back a million years ago uh it's a great fragrance i still ha- own a bottle of it but if you are a fan, if, you, if you've watched that video, or if you want to know my thoughts on it, I'd say it's a great fragrance, but this is it. This is the daddy right here. This takes what Vulgari Man Extreme did with the concept of the vetiver, relished with these um, beautiful um, aquatic, kind of like, almost like, 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 kind of like wet greens in a way, um, and that's probably the vetiver actually enriched with um, a watery note. This takes it to another level, um, and also encrests it with a bit of orange, like an orange juicy um, kind of a, a scent. It is absolutely outrageous um, how good this stuff is. And the compliment factor is insane. Again, I'm not somebody who goes into compliments that much um, with this anymore. Um, I did certainly back in the day, but now I, I don't really care. I just am passionate about the art form as itself. But I, I got to say that if you're wanting a a compliment um if you want a compliment uh, if you want a fragrance that has a huge compliment factor um and also is incredibly crafted then definitely definitely go for this i should definitely do a review on this there's so much to say and it has been in my opinion poorly underlooked by the community if you're interested i'd definitely get a sample of this because for me this is truly um one of those fragrances that has that it factor that we always crave. But my number one is um, a fragrance that I truly live and breathe by. Um, it is a, <laughs> it's a fragrance that um, I have trouble wearing because I can get quite addicted to it to the point where I can some I can I can leave out the others i've been fair this year you know i've won all of these i mean this is a truly wonderful list i I, i'm so uh, happy and humbled and enthralled that i've got to um wear all these beautiful creations um i'm gonna um speak a a, quite a a little bit here about my number one uh, and also about the way that i process uh, some of these things as well so it is from creed um it is the one, the only, uh, Millicime Imperial. Um, I mean, uh, I, 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 okay, so, so, so this is what you've got to imagine, right? If you've never, in fact, I want to just say something, right? If this is your first ever fragrance video, um, you've never seen any fragrance videos before, um, I'm not like everybody, and that's, that's fine. If you just want a normal sort of, like, chap, um, uh, just kind of like saying, oh, this smells nice and that smells nice. You can find those people. They are a plenty. I go a bit kind of mad and kind of woo-woo with this stuff at this point, um, five years in. Um, so before everything, that I, before I'm about to kind of divulge and say what I'm about to say about this fragrance, I just want to say that it also does just smell nice. You know, this fragrance is just a pleasant, it can be seen as just a really pleasant fragrance to wear, but I see it um, as so much more than that. So here's what I want you to imagine right now. Uh, you're on a beach, right? Really beautiful beach. It's The sun is shining. It's incredible. Um, to your left, you f- feel and you hear and you smell the sea, the, the ocean bed, and you get some of the marine um, notes and you get the sea salt. It's quite a, a salty ocean, so you get the sea salt quite heavy. And then to your right is this huge engulfing forest. It's like you're on a, like a, a hidden island or something. And in that forest is beautiful ripened fruits and um, they're so ripened that even the skin and the flesh is um is perpetuating uh, so much scent so like oranges uh lemons um maybe even um a watermelon that's been cut open in the distance maybe who knows and you get all of that and you put it all uh together and you get uh, millisim imperial but there's so much more to that because when i smell it it's so rich in detail. It is like a painting to me. But what painting is it, right? You can have that beautiful pastoral um, island that I described, and it's wonderful and fully saturated with colours. But you could also, I, I could also see, um, because of certain elements in it, it's be also it could be a melancholy painting. 
it could be a bit of a bittersweet painting. I could also see um, like it's twilight at the ocean and maybe there's like a a little sort of boat or ship and there's like an older gentleman and he wants to go on adventures. He wants to visit the island that I described but he sort of can't. Um, There's a lot of imagery there's a lot of vividness within this that i have i have gained from so many years of wearing it truly um uh th- there's a lot of different emotions that can go into uh interpreting millisimi bidial and it's a lot m- and it i would always argue that it's a lot more than just a nice watermelony scent that doesn't really last you know which some people can be very quick to um, label it and judge it. I am past that. It is so much more. It is truly um, a beautiful, wondrous um, masterpiece by Olivier Creed, and I would expect nothing less uh, from him. He has devoted his life to the art form. So that is it. That is my number one. Maybe a little bit predictable. Uh, one day I will review this, uh, but there's a few more adventures that I want to go on with it before I come to my final conclusions regarding it. But that's it. That is my top 10 summer list of 2017. 